Greetings, everyone. My name is Hao Ling. I'm here to share our experiences in understanding a critical performance issue: unresponsiveness in Android at scale in the wild. In these five parts of my presentation, I'm about to show you our efforts, choices, and techniques for designing a large-scale measurement at the OS level, as well as critical discoveries that lead to practical solutions. First. Let's begin with some basics and real-world examples of the problems we face. Responsiveness is among the key metrics that determine user experiences. Despite years of efforts, Android users are still often troubled by poor responsiveness, which negatively impacts productivity, satisfaction, and engagement. If you are an Android user yourself, you may find this topic rather familiar. In particular, two types of unresponsiveness have the most disruptive impact. One of them is application not responding, or NR. The other one is system not responding, or SNR. Both of them are triggered when response timeout occurs to an app or system thread. When an NR occurs, a system dialog will be displayed, asking users to either continue wait or kill the app. If an SNR happens, even the system itself will be forced to restart. None of this scenario is acceptable to common users. As you basically lose control of your devices. Unfortunately, to date, we know little about ANR and SNR's prevalence, characteristics, and root causes due to a lack of large-scale measurement and analysis on real-world smartphone usage. This hinders communities' practices toward bettering user experiences. To measure and analyze the problems at scale, a practical data collection infrastructure on end devices is essential. Given that overhead on end side should be as low as possible, the first thing came to our mind is the original diagnostic mechanism in Android, which provides institute logging of CPU memory states and cost stacks of timeout processes. However, this mechanism lacks critical visibility into system services that is important to problem analysis. To address this, simply developing an app is not enough, even with root privilege. Therefore, we develop a customized Android system called Android Mode to collect the additional information by applying lightweight modifications to vanilla Android versions 7.0, 8.0, and 9.0. In collaboration with a major phone vendor named Xiaomi, we invite their active users to participate in our measurement study. Eventually, over 30,000 users opted in by upgrading their systems to Android Mode. For three weeks. Android Mode monitors ANR and SNR events on opt-in users' devices and collects critical data. As a result, we capture a wide range of phones across 15 different device models and three Android versions. To figure out the root causes of an ANR or SNR event, app or system developers usually analyze this corresponding log by hand. However, our large-scale context requires methods that are much more scalable. Therefore. We devise an automatic analysis pipeline to facilitate diagnosis. Our proposed analysis pipeline first leverages weight foregraph to locate the critical block thread, and then uses similar stack analysis to classify ANR or SNR events to a root cause cluster if they exhibit similar symptoms in the thread's cause stacks and system states. Validations show that it produces no false positive in analysis. Specifically. To uncover the root causes of an ANR or SNR, a main target is to locate the critical thread that is most related to the event. To this end, we decompose the process-level cause stacks into thread-level cause stacks. When a timeout event occurs, Android marks the thread as blocked to assist analysis. However, this blocked thread is usually not the critical thread that we seek, because the blocking of this thread. Might in fact be caused by other threats of the process, or even threats of system services due to IPC. Therefore, we construct a weight foregraph based on the weight, lock, and IPC information in the core stack to explore the blocking relationships among threats. Finally, we deem the end node in the graph as our desired critical thread. Having found the critical thread, we remove irrelevant information such as memory address. And thread ID from the core stacks, and reconstruct the remainder into a feature vector to calculate similarity in a split and merge manner. Events with high similarity in their feature vectors are considered to share the same root cause, 
and can be analyzed together to relieve labor analysis work. With these efforts in large-scale data collection and automatic analysis, we have multiple findings on ANR and SNR in terms of their prevalence, characteristics, and root causes. First, our measurement reveals that both ANR and SNR occur prevalently on all the studied 15 phone models. On average, 29% Android systems encounter at least an ANR or SNR event every 10 days. Also, we capture a total of around 15,000 ANR events involving a total of around 1,500 Android apps. However, ANR events distributions are quite skewed, with 60% ANR events are attributed to only the top 10 apps. In general, ANR can occur to a wide range of apps, among which video streaming and 3D interactive gaming are more likely to encounter ANR. Further, we find that ANR and SNR events are highly correlated in terms of occurrences. At a first glance, the high correlation indicates that an SNR event is likely to be caused by an ANR event. However, by examining the time intervals of adjacent events, we find that there is no causality between ANR and SNR events, suggesting that ANR and SNR tend to be caused at the system level. As in common users' intuitions and phone vendors' propaganda, better hardware should help improve software responsiveness. We wish to know whether this is true. Surprisingly, we find it to be exactly the opposite. There are no correlations between hardware and the prevalence of ANR and SNR. Also, better hardware even appears to aggravate SNR, clearly indicating that ANR and SNR are not a hardware issue. For OS versions, the newest system has less ANR but more SNR, while Android 8.0 has the best system level responsiveness, probably owing to its moderate performance as well as sound stability and robustness. With automatic root cause analysis, we locate four major root causes and surprisingly find that the largest root cause, which we call the Pathological Right Amplification Mitigation, or WAM in Android, can in fact be fundamentally eliminated. WAM is a mechanism introduced to mitigate the right amplification problem in flash storage. As a common storage medium for smartphones, Flash storage has a unique characteristic compared to traditional rotating disk storage. A block-level erase operation is required before writing data into a page, leading to the write amplification problem. That is, when you write data to the flash storage, the actual data write amounts might be much larger than the original data size. To address this, Android introduces WAM, which issues the discard command upon a de file deletion to tell the flash storage which pages containing the file's data are invalid now. The flash storage can later train blocks with invalid pages to improve write performance. Currently, Android's WAM operates in a real-time manner that issues discard commands immediately upon file deletions. According to our measurement, around 20 GB data are deleted per day on a common device incurring a large number of discards. Theoretically, this shouldn't be a problem since discard is designed to be a synchronous. In practice, however, a special synchronous command, fsync, is often issued before write or read to ensure the data consistency between memory and storage. The specialty of fsync lies in that its execution requires the completion of all the preceding discards. Therefore, as shown in the figure, when App1 issues a bunch of discards, App2's fsync and subsequent write commands could be blocked for a long time, leading to ANR or SNR. To tackle the issue, we target another WAM mechanism in Android called Batch WAM, which performs a global trimming of the storage once a day. Based on this, we design a practical on-demand WAM that is fine-grained and non-intrusive. By monitoring critical system states, including file deletion amounts and screen states, we perform batch WAM when the deletion amount reaches a data-driven threshold, and avoid influencing user experiences by pausing the process when the device is not idle. In this way, we can fundamentally eliminate the WAM incurred ANR and SNR. We implement our solution as a lightweight patch to the system and evaluate its performance in the wild. 
The original 30,000 users are invited to install the patch and 14,000 of them opted in. As a result, our solution reduces 32% of ANR and 47% of SNR perform. Almost all of the WAM incurred ANR and SNR have been avoided. Compared to the real-time WAM in Android, we incur only 3% decreases in data write speed. Given the effectiveness in improving system responsiveness, Xiaomi further adopted the solution in five of its stock Android systems, benefiting around 20 million Android users. Furthermore, we observed that other vendors such as Huawei have also adopted a similar scheme for performance optimizations. To conclude this talk, I summarize our work's major contributions as follows. We conduct the first large-scale measurement of ANR and SNR of Android in the wild. We discover that ANR and SNR are more of a software issue than a hardware issue. We present our end-to-end -end data collection and analysis pipeline for deeply understanding ANR and SNR. We diagnose and address the largest root cause of ANR and SNR. After real-world deployment, our solution reduces 32% ANR and 47% SNR events while only decreasing 3% of the data write speed. Also, we have released our dataset and code in part to the community. You are most welcome to check it out. Thank you.